salute to you all. The brave never fall. It's time to raise the bar. But you're not challenging yourself enough to actually go for something more than what you already have. For some people, it's not important to do that. For other people, it's essential for them to do that. I would be one of the people that it's essential for me to always continue raising the bar, never get stagnant, and accept things in my life just because they're in my life. Essentially, you're taking those things for granted when you do that. Everything in your life can be better. No matter if they're here to stay or they may leave tomorrow, there could be improvements that could be made. Some things, are they are fine the way they are. And you don't want to push the envelope because you can push things too far and they may break. I completely get that. But that's an individual's choice and that's up to you to decide what priorities in your life can be enhanced. Because those priorities are what define you in a way. If you do something every single day and you're obligated to do it and it's part of your lifestyle and it's part of your daily routine and it's something that gives you value... Are you fine the way that it is? Or do you think how much better would that be if I actually pushed the envelope and raised the bar just a little bit more? This mindset can be applied to almost every single thing you do throughout your day, throughout your week, your month, your year, your life. I have forced myself to think about this every time I do anything. How could I have done that a little bit better? Every single time. And it was extremely difficult for me to put myself in that position because it forces you to be disciplined. It literally forces you to enact a routine of discipline in your life when you do that. But you have to go to the extreme to get to that point. You have to become obsessed with wanting to be better at everything that you do. From the tiniest little thing to the biggest thing. Because when I tried to pinpoint certain things in my life that I just considered to be the big things and just say, okay, I'm just going to do those things really, really well and push the envelope with those. And then all the other things are in my life that are doing okay and they're average or, you know, I'm not really that interested in enhancing that any further. Those can stay where they are. I don't have to focus on them. Those would be great because I don't have to put so much energy into maintaining those. The problem is with that is that you're forcing your brain to go really intense and then pull back, go really intense and then pull back. And then something would suffer. It was exhausting for me when I did that. When I would go to work and say, okay, for these eight hours, I'm going to go hard. I'm going to push myself. But then when I get home, I'm going to relax. You lose the momentum you have from work. And I always thought after a while, when I started realizing one important thing, I'm like, well, what if I just kept that momentum right into when I got home, right into you know, my relationship, right into my kid, right into my hobbies, my, you know, to the chores, to the, the errands, everything. What if I just kept that mindset, that heightened mindset of pushing everything, not going to so crazy where you're insane, but just a heightened sense of awareness that what you're doing can be better. And that every time you do it, you, you're basically enhancing yourself. It's almost like you're upgrading software in your own mind. You just keep downloading stuff. You're just, you're just always upgrading and you're making yourself better. You're making yourself mentally sharper because you're forcing yourself to say, I'm not going to settle for average. I'm not going to settle for mediocrity. I want to be better than that. So I did that for probably two or three years. That was my mindset. I forced myself, everything I did, it was done correctly or I would do it over again if I could. So It could be something as simple as the laundry. Okay, I have 15 minutes. Can I get this done in this amount of time? Get them down there, get it started, get out. And then in that little bit of time, could I do this and this and this? So I I started with time. How much time am I wasting per day by not doing things a little bit more efficiently and a little faster, a little smarter? That opened up a lot because I realized once I started doing that, Okay, well, it normally takes me 15 minutes to do this. Let me get it done in five. What am I going to do with the other 10? And if you do that several times a day, you've gotten yourself an extra hour just by speeding things up and being efficient enough where not only are you doing it, but it's done correctly. 
It's not lazy and it's not half-assed. It's done the correct way and you can move on and you leave that chore or that hobby or that errand, everything that you do like that, you leave with a sense of satisfaction because you know you did it. You did it right. You did it efficiently and you're on to the next thing and you have a little time to kill and you feel like you earned that time to kill if you want to kill that time or you can do something productive with it. I, I go both ways with it. Sometimes I'll do it and I'll I'll sit and I'll meditate or I'll I'll check the news real quick or I'll go and make me an extra cup of co- cup of coffee. I'll I'll do 25 push ups. That's your time. Do it. Do what you want with it. You could read 25 pages of a comic book. It's your time. But you earn that time because you already put in the effort. You put in the time, the effort, and you push yourself to get something done that you normally would take a lot more time to do. Once you get that in your mind and that routine starts going, you start to become obsessed with it in a very good way, not a bad way. You're not turning OCD. You're not turning psychotic. You're just turning into a person who values their time. That's essentially what you're doing. You're just managing your time throughout the day better. You're, you're incorporating a routine that is based on efficiency, that is based on discipline, that is uh, that is something that benefits you and anybody who's close to you because that's more time for loved ones. You know, when I when I slow down and I half-ass something or I, I, I get lazy with something, that's time taken away from a relationship, from my son, from uh, from my hobbies, from my exercise, from a running session. The things that you want to do, the things that you want to do, you want extra time in the day for that, not less. And I think a lot of people have it reversed. They don't want to do things, so they take longer to do the things that they don't want to do. And then they have less time to do the things they do want to do. It should be completely the other way around. You should be getting your work done as quickly as possible. Even when you're at work. I know people say, well, I have eight hours no matter what. Well, that's fine. When I go to work, I do about 12 hours worth of work in eight hours. And people say, well, why would you do that? Because it's a mindset. Because I want that momentum to carry out of the workplace to home to the person I'm in a relationship with. I want them to have that same energy. They deserve to have that same energy that I have at work at home with them. Same with my son. He deserves his father to have the same energy and the same amount of focus that he would have at work at home with him. He deserves all my energy, my focus and attention. And I don't like to turn it off. I like it to have it. The moment I wake up to when I go to bed, I like the same intensity. That doesn't mean I'm intense and I'm psychotic. That just means I'm focused. I'm in a, I'm in a routine. It's not a, such a strict routine where I don't have spontaneity because I love to be spontaneous. I love doing things that I didn't think I was going to do that day. That enhances the day because you, your day, for the most part, is always structured. So if you have a little window of time, which you've earned because you got through a lot of other stuff a lot more efficient, then you have a lot more time for spontaneity, don't you? Because a lot of people say, I don't have time to be spontaneity, I don't have, uh, to be spontaneous. I don't have time to just go off the cuff and do something. Uh, yeah, you do. If you get some of the other stuff done a little more efficient, you'd be surprised how much more time you have in a day. I can tell you, I work very hard. I get out of work and I just feel like I didn't go to work at all sometimes mentally and physically because once I get in a routine like that, it's it's just discipline. It's second nature. Your body gets used to it. Your body gets used to hard work and doing it as quickly as possible and efficiently as possible. Now, I'm not saying that you, everything has to be done so super quick and then that's not what i'm saying because some people physically can't do it but really i'm talking about the mind it's just the mindset behind it regardless of how much time you have left it always feels good to know you did something very efficiently and you weren't being lazy about it you weren't procrastinating about it you weren't half-assing it you weren't being lazy you didn't you're not going to go into it thinking I just can't wait for this to be done and then do a great job and then towards the end it drops off and you're doing a horrible job at the end you're not doing any of that stuff because your mind will take pride in the fact that you are able to do these things but it has to be done over a, a, a longer period of time than some people are even a lot give themselves credit for even being able to do you haven't even tried it yet give yourself some credit give it a shot Just take a week and just say, I'm going to push it. Everything I do this week, I'm going to push it. I'm going to raise the bar for myself, my mind, and my body. I'm going to go hard this week. 
Yeah, it's going to hurt. Yeah, it's going to suck. But I'm going to feel so good knowing I got through this seven-day marathon of work and relationships and obligations and errands and paying bills and doing all the things that adulthood and young adulthood requires. And even in old age, you get through seven days of just raising a bar with everything. Just do everything a little bit better than you know you're capable of doing. Just go a little bit harder. If you read books, read an extra chapter a day. If you go for a run, run an extra mile. If you like to talk, talk to somebody you haven't talked to in a while. Do something different. Because a lot of times that's really what it comes down to. Because I know for me, when you push yourself, you find, okay, well, I have extra time to do stuff. That's where the different stuff comes in. That's when you are able to get to things that you weren't, you don't normally have time to do. That's when you can go to bed and say, wow, I did a lot today. Because you're just opening up avenues to get more stuff done. And it doesn't have to be jam-packed. And you're going to have plenty of time to relax. But that relaxation is even better because you know you earned it. You earned it because you know you went hard that day with everything. That's the best feeling in the world for me. At the end of the day, when it's, I'm winding down, and I can look back and say, you know, I earned my rest tonight. And then I look at the clock and I'm like, I can't wait to get back up and fill this again tomorrow. It it becomes a, a good, healthy addiction. It becomes an obsession. It becomes something that is a way of life for you. But it, it all starts with you knowing you need to raise the bar for yourself. Then that can be raising a bar for that aspect. It can also be raising a bar for what type of people you have in your life. Because... Raising the bar for that is is going back to self-respect, discipline, and understanding, knowing, and loving yourself. You deserve to have the highest standards for anyone who's in your life, especially if you can help it. But when it comes to friends and family, you really want to make sure the majority of your time is spent with people who have very high standards just like you do. And if you can get ones that have even higher standards, you really want to hang out with them because those are the ones you're going to learn from. The ones that succeed, that have a good head on their shoulders, they have goals, they are disciplined. You want those people in your life. Those are the people you want to talk to every day. You want that knowledge to rub off on you. If you have people who are going nowhere, they're going backwards, you have no time for that. That bar is too low. And I know some people say, family members, you still have the right to limit your time with those people. No, you can't always eliminate them completely from your life like you can a friend. But to be honest, if someone is dragging you down and they're not the healthiest for your mindset and your heart and your self-development and your self-love and your discipline, you need to tone back that person's involvement in your life as much as you can. And I have done it with some very close people in my life. And it has not been easy. And I wish we had a better relationship. We just don't. So I limit my time. I don't eliminate them from my life. There have been friends I've had to eliminate from my life. There have been family members I've had to eliminate from my life. But there are certain ones you just can't do. And as bad as you want to, you just feel horrible inside for having to do it. So you don't have to. You can limit your time. And that shows them that you love yourself. You care enough about yourself to not put yourself in a situation where you're always constantly feeling like you're being ripped down and torn down by people who know how to press your buttons, to know where to hit you, where to shoot that arrow and and have it hit right in your heart every time, right when you're feeling like you're doing great, right when everything feels great. These people who have low bars for their relationship with you, they're, or they are going to come into your life and they're going to cause havoc. A lot of times they're not doing it on purpose. These are just these people's lifestyle. This is just how they think. And you're involved with them. So you're taking all their energy and you're going to feel like crap just like they are. It's not easy trying to deal with all these things. There's no doubt about that. There's no easy way to figure all these things out, which is why you have to go in being brave. You have to be brave. You have to be courageous. You have to take chances and overcome things that are very uncomfortable. These struggles do not get easy. They never get easy. You just are better equipped to how to deal with them 
on a more consistent basis. You can trust that you can overcome these things. But the only way you do it is that you have to go through it. And it doesn't have to be a drastic change. I always recommend for people, if you can change, some people uh, need that quick change. They need a quick start. They need to get going right now. Other people benefit from more of a gradual change because that abrupt change is a little bit too much of a jolt to their system and their lifestyle. And I understand that and that's completely okay. What's important is that people know that change needs to happen. Raising a bar for yourself is a form of change. It's a very important form of change. It is one of those changes that means you are in the right path. You are on the right path of self-love and discipline and having a routine and habits that are healthy for you, for healthy for the people that are around you. That's why raising a bar is so is such an essential tool for my life. And I also believe that, you know, if you're in a relationship, the same deal. If someone is treating you poorly, you feel your self-worth is being kicked out of you. You're feeling drugged down by negative energy. That means your bar has dropped and you have dropped right along with it. You're hanging onto a bar that is falling fast. You got to let go of that bar. Walk away from it and, and readjust it. Get the ladder out. <laughs> And you put that ladder as high as that ladder goes. And you put that bar much higher. And then you do whatever you can to reach it. Because that is not a good situation for you to be in. Just like the family member thing. I know it's tough, but you don't owe that person in that relationship anything if they're treating you poorly. They're telling you right in your face that you don't mean anything to them. Your self-worth has to be stronger than that. You have to believe that you deserve better than that. And the only way you can do that is that you have to raise that bar and believe you deserve that high bar. Whatever is up there, you deserve it. Then you will get it. That is the greatest thing about all this is that it's not just words. Trust me on that. It's not just words. It's a belief in yourself. It's self-love. It's discipline. It's a routine. It's you saying, I will not settle for anything less and I'd rather be alone because I have self-love and I'm okay with being alone. Into that right person, that right family member comes into my life, that right job. You don't ever settle. That is not what you're here for. Your life should never be settled on. Believe me, you have to dig deep into your mind and in your heart. You have to manifest these things. You have to meditate on them. You have to do whatever it is you need to do. Dream. I don't care. Write it down. Write down your story. Write down your future story. Don't let your future self down by sabotaging them now, by having your bar too low. You are kicking your own self in the future. If you was to meet yourself in the future, what would you say to him in this moment? I didn't even try. I didn't even try to your future self. You're going to actually say that to them? You owe it to your future self to try. Because right now, that future self, their biggest enemy is you in this moment. I think about that every day. That person in the future that is you wants you to raise that bar. They don't want you to settle. Because if you do, you are sabotaging yourself by settling on things. It's okay to second guess yourself. It's okay to say maybe that bar's a little bit too high. Take it slow. The ones that think you can go get it right now and you just say, hey, it's time to go get it, go get it. You've earned the right to do that. And I know it's hard. You look around, everyone else seems so content. They're just getting by. They're not sweating. They're not tired. They're not upset. Everything's perfect. Problem is that it's not. All those people you see out there, nobody's perfect. They have things they need to work on too. They're just choosing not to do it. You don't have to be that person. You can be different. You can be stronger. You can be braver and you can raise that bar high and you can get after it. You don't have to do what everyone else is doing. You do what you need to do. Whatever it is you need to do to feel content and whole in your heart, that's what you do. 
if it's healthy for you, if it brings value to you. We're not talking about going to things like drugs and alcohol because that makes you feel better. That is not what we're talking about here. We're talking about living a fulfilled life with healthy choices, having healthy things and people around you that bring nothing but the best value to your life. People you can learn from, people who have raised the bar themselves, that you can pull in all that positive energy. If they're not doing that, you're sabotaging yourself. It's a choice. Make the right one. If no one has told you this today, I love you. You deserve to hear that. Salute to you all. The brave never fall.